All right, so hello everyone and welcome to yet another PTC Nordic Talks webinar, where we are honored today by having Ankit Bhargava, who is the head of the Manufacturing Vertical at Tech Mahindra for a session on Scalable Approach for Industry 4.0, Transformation with industri Industrial Clouds. But first, a quick introduction about myself. My name is Tobin Peterson, and I'm the Alliance Manager for PTC in the Nordics, and we are running all these webinars every week, same time. We also invite customers and partners for some inspiration on digital transformation to see what is possible and how to make things happen. And also the past webinars have been recorded and are to be found on the registration site. The agenda for today is first a very quick overview of PTC by my colleague Carl from the customer success team. And then Ankit will start by introducing himself and the touch base on a few challenges, how to address these, and then explain some of the out outcomes. And that then we will also have a Q&A session, so please keep your questions to the end. So over, over to you, Carl. Yeah, thank you. So PTC is an international software company with headquarters based in Boston. <clears throat> We are developing software mainly for manufacturing companies since 1985. We offer tools for the digital transformation, such as CAD for design, PLM for managing data, IoT uh, to connect products or manufacturing operation, and augmented reality to visualize and interact with the, the digital thread. To you, and Ankit. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, Torbin, for the introduction. Uh, before getting into the topic, just a couple of slides on uh, who we are, uh, just to give you a briefing about you know what Tech Mahindra is. Uh, so we are part of a larger group called the Mahindra Group, who is into you know different businesses. One of the core businesses is into the automotive, so we make automotive vehicles ourselves. Then uh, we have businesses in, in industrial farm equipment. We are, uh, you know, from a revenue perspective, number one in industrial and farm equipment, making, you know, small, from small to big scale industrial farm machinery, from tractors, etc. Then we also have other businesses, uh, you know, in the banking finance uh, spaces as well in India. Uh, and then we have Tech Mahindra, uh, who I represent in terms of you know the overall IT services company, which support you know not only the IT part of it but the OT side of it, and that's where you know the group uh, flagship, the engineering comes across, uh, uh, you know the kind of knowledge comes across with us. That's the DNA we come and we serve a lot of manufacturing customers. So our 2025 percent of the revenue actually comes from the manufacturing space where we are focused into not only automotive, but uh, you know, the industrial discrete manufacturers, uh, aerospace, and uh, also the process industries, including, so we have divided the process into two different verticals, one focused on the chemical side of the business, and the other is really into the middle side of the business, be it paper, pulp, cement, et cetera. So that's how we are lined up, how we are focused uh, providing services. Uh, and just for your information, we also have, you know, invested into the e-racing. So we have this Formula One uh, e-racing, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, basically the, you know, uh, championship which we participate in. So that's where we come across and, you know, we also provide services in different arenas in that side as well. So yeah, as a part of the manufacturing uh, story, uh, we cut across and we are focused into the three dimensions, the product, the production and the performance side of it. And I'll talk more about the production today in terms of how you're building towards the industry 4.0, but then there, definitely there is linkages around the product and the performance, because as we know, you know, that is a kind of a synchronization which is required, whether it is from your design, how do you get into the you know uh, you know the e bomb to a m bomb transformation or creating bill of uh, bill of processes in an automated way so those are certain kind of areas we are working across and then how do you transfer that work instructions basically into the production environment and create a kind of a digital threat along the way towards the you know aftermarket side of it when we say performance it's more you know towards our aftermarket side of the story when the product is there with the customer and how does you know how do we make you know new business service lines etc using technologies like iot uh, you know and because it requires really for, you know the four five different elements right from sensorization building the iot gateway integrating it across you know towards a cloud based iot layer and then getting all the diagnostic 
uh, data points, getting into the predictive elements out of it. So that's where we cut across all three, the product, production and performance side of it. And that's where we are focused in, in terms of giving, you know, our customers, uh, you know, basically aligning to our customers strategic direction and providing services across to them. So just a snapshot on what we do, and I really uh, you wanted to jump into the topic for the today in terms of how to build scalable you know, approach and deliver industry 4.0 transformation. So what uh, our experience in the last four or five years has been is, you know, uh, as we have been delivering the industry 4.0 use cases for many of our customers, but then we have seen that, you know, with many of the manufacturers that, you know, this really hasn't scaled up in a certain sense. So you do a POC, you do an interesting use case in, uh, say, one plant in Sweden, in one of the factories, but then it remains there. Right. And similarly, you know, in different multiple plants, you would have done uh, different kind of a use cases. But then, you know, from an overall business perspective, you don't see a kind of a scaling up, which is, you know, defined. So. We went back and we, you know, this was a problem which came to us a few years ago. So we we said that we need to look at in a four different dimensions that how we can serve our customers to build an approach and then continue that on an ongoing basis. And I'll explain these four aspects, you know, in terms of a case study, what we have done. OK, but before getting into this, what are these aspects? So these aspects are really the number one is we need to have a ROI driven approach. We need to look into the business KPIs and how we can financially engineer all this, you know, using a toolkit which we developed basically. So that's where, uh, you know, the business use cases has to come together. The business strategy has to come together along with the, uh, uh, you know, the ROI which is received, right? So those are a couple of elements where, you know, uh, that has to be teamed up. And that's where, you know, the point number three, when I talk about the people process technology, that has to be met because uh, through the initial part of the journey, we were also focusing more into the technology, the business part of it, and then link the financial KPIs. But there was another aspect, you know, in terms of when we deliver these, we came across that, okay, you know, uh, what's the perspective from a people side of it? What should a manufacturing organization do in terms of, you know, how to build the skill set to, uh, really scale the industry 4.0. So what skill set they should really keep it at the core with themselves, what they can outsource to other companies, how that entire strategy looks like. So then we said, we took a step back and said, you know, we need to define this in an approach with customers, uh, you know, taking their goals ahead, uh, aligning in uh, their people strategy as well in terms of how this can be defined together. So that's where we brought this element uh, in addition to our toolkit which we use to do a complete, you know, uh, assessment, uh, scanning of the factories, building the business use cases, linking it to, you know, how the change management people perspective has to be taken into the picture and then creating a ROI model that, okay, for if you have 50 different use cases to be implemented in a, and there's a roadmap created for six to seven years, how, what use cases, where the complete roadmap has to be, uh, when we develop, what kind of investment you need from a phase-wise perspective and what kind of results you should be expecting out of it. The next challenge which we saw sometimes from a scalability for some of the solutions was the foundation is not there. Some of the infrastructure elements is not there. What kind of a, you know, edge-based solution is something we should look at or a cloud-based solution is something we look at. So that kind of a technical foundation, the technical element, uh, you know, has to be defined uh, at the start of the journey is what we believe. And that's where we say that, okay, in our entire approach, in our entire, you know, uh, making the strategy uh, towards moving towards industry 4.0, that is a critical element we should look at. And along with it, you know, when I say infrastructure, network, cloud, you know, there's a security element because that is very, very important as well. So that's where we imbibed you know, this entire strategy when we take, you know, transformation, uh, you know, goals from a customer, we look at it from all these perspectives and then create a charter for them. And I'll show you just an example on that, how we did it for a, you know, truck major and where the operations of this truck major are across the globe. They have factories in uh, uh, America, they have factories in Europe, they have factories in Asia Pac. So we, uh, you know, so when we met 
uh, the CEO there, we had a discussion in terms of, you know, so he understood the goals of Industry 4.0. He understood, you know, how, uh, you know, uh, things would change from Industry 4.0 perspective. Then, but then his question was, you know, how mature are we ourselves right now in Industry 4.0? How and what is the kind of a business case, you know, that the industry 4.0 will drive for me? What because my goals are really looking at how do I, you know, increase the build rate of my trust because I am behind my, behind the demand which is coming in. I need to really look at, you know, some of the quality aspects because I am seeing there's a lot of, you know, defects which are coming across. Uh, you know, in my production process, so I need to look more towards how do I build the first uh, you know, first time right model for myself. Then how do I look at, you know, certain of the error proofing aspects which are there to look from a both quality and a safety perspective. So when we're discussing about all these business goals and obviously cost is the third element is when it came to the picture when we had this discussion. And uh, so he said that, OK, you, I understand these are the business goals which I uh, which you, you, you know, you'll be targeted. But how do you define that through the industry 4.0 strategy? How do you put those business cases together? Uh, what kind of capabilities uh, should I build? You know, we, we will need to uh, bring together into the game. And then how do you ensure that it is a scalable and a sustainable solution for us? And it doesn't lie just as one POC done in a factory environment. So we went ahead, we said, let us do, you know, a scanning of your plants. We did a kind of a quick scan of their plants uh, you know, and this entire pro program of building this approach, a scalable approach for them, actually took around about uh, six weeks, where we uh, actually eight weeks, where we, uh, you know, assess six of their plants. Uh, we uh, did a scanning across, you know, seven different areas, right from automation, how the supply chain is set up, what kind of supplier ecosystems they look at, to the quality part of it, and then was their manufacturing operations management layer? Is there a shop flow to top flow kind of connectivity across there? What functionalities are built across there? What kind of a visibility uh, or a traceability is there across, you know, different plants? And obviously different plants have different maturity, uh, you know, different automation layer, which is there, uh, different networking, uh, you know, aspects which are there, uh, you know, the pro engineering to production bridge, how it is set up currently, is it set up or not? It is totally disconnected. So all these angles is something we did a quick scanning for them uh, across these plants. Uh, uh, created a 2B, you know, as is 2B scenario. Saw the gaps through uh, across entirely from both the, so, you know, truck assembly perspective and the engines perspective. And mapped it both from an industry perspective as well, that what kind of a benchmarks, you know, they should be looking at for each of these solutions to uh, also look at, you know, where possibly feasible their direction could be in. So as we did this, you know, and we used our toolkit, which I was referring to you earlier upon, uh, which we had created. And uh, just to give you a view, the toolkit is mature. Again, you know, the five years, six years ago is something where we started a journey with many of the customers of so different aspects, not only from an automotive perspective, discrete industry. So it's, it's kind of cross leveraging, you know, different industry. Uh, flavor into it. So that's how it's become more mature and mature right now. We are actually on the 13th version of it. So that's where, you know, that toolkit comes across. We do the scanning. We create a kind of a roadmap ahead and ahead. For this customer, uh, you know, we created these are certain, you know, obviously it's not the, uh, it's a sample kind of a roadmap, but then we created around 49 different charters for this customer for you know, seven years, next seven years. And how do we, you know, build a foundation? How do we build a backbone? In the first one year, what all aspects we need to cover? What is the kind of a engineering to manufacturing bridge we need to set up? The product, how does it, you know, do a better engineering change management, right? For example, if a product comes across, you know, a new, a different change in a product is coming or a new product is coming, how does the engineering team and the manufacturing teams collaborate and work across in a better fashion? Because typically, Sometimes it takes months, you know, to do that, which could be done in a couple of days, kind of a, because of a lack of collaboration across uh, both the, you know, different engineering and the production uh, uh, personnel. But then that's where we saw a gap there. We said, you know, that is something we can immediately look at. We can immediately convert and reduce your new products introduction time. 
So those are certain aspects, you know, we started off with a journey uh, from our engineering to manufacturing perspective as well, and then core, you know, from a skill perspective, uh, setting up a value re realization office for them in the first year. And we mapped across, you know, did detailings in terms of what, what each of the use case, you know, uh, how does that affect, you know, the product, the, you know, the, uh, some of the parameters like the product, the conditioning, the human aspects over there. What are the parameters? You know, we are looking at certain tooling examples, you know, uh, certain tooling from a workstation perspective, uh, how those kind of tooling can be, you know, automated or improved from an operational efficiency perspective. So, you know, build this complete layer, uh, looked at what all, you know, KPIs it is impacting in, and then forward, you know, going forward, is that's where you know the business goal meet the financial target and we create a technical ar architecture there so just to give a view you know uh, so there's a business case there's a benefit uh, which is you know if you see at the beginning there were certain business goals defined how that comes across with the business goals there's a value attached to it so this is kind of a you know yearly benefit which the customer would get with the investment you know from from a hardware device connectivity, certain sensorization, which is a requirement, or a software la layer, which is embedded into it. So based on that, we created a architecture, detailed architecture was there for each of the use cases and you know, data flow elements were there for each one of them. And then we said, let's start this journey. Let us go ahead. And how we start this journey is we take a few of the plants because there are two approaches we typically take in the next step in taking the journey. One is we take, uh, you know, many of us will take a model kind of a plant. We set up use cases for that and we try to, you know, roll it out. Here, you know, uh, when we spoke to different stakeholders, we had so many numerous conversations with them. We saw each plant had a difficult, uh, you know, different kind of a priority, which will give them a good kind of a value add immediately, right? So we took four of the plants. We said we will start with four plants. We will take four different use cases in these four plants. We will try to create and establish value for the, you know, uh, manufacturing layer there, right? And then that's where we prioritized four of the programs with different plants because they're making different types of trucks. Their processes are a little different. Their application landscape, uh, landscape is also a little different. Their control layers is different, everything. So, so we kind of tuned in different programs for different plants started working on them. So if you see for the first one of the sites in North America, we started doing a paint quality analysis because, you know, their real uh, you know problem was there was a lot of free work into it, you know, from a paint perspective. And, you know, the uh, the entire CUPQ is the, you know, the quality, uh, you know, was affected basically. And that's where, you know, uh, we started doing certain analysis on, on top of Thingworks. So Thingworks is a platform we, uh, you know, kind of decided to, uh, because of the capability it brings across and the scalability, you know, you can uh, come across with that. We selected Thingworks and then, you know, started these programs across, you know, different sites. So uh, four different programs. So event quality was one of them, and you can see the kind of benefit, you know, it's achieved over the three years. It's a kind of 119% ROI, which we are giving it to them in terms of rework, the amount of, you know, uh, truck cars cost, you know, we save for them. So that's how it's kind of conditioning into it. So, uh, similarly, you know, for uh, another site in North America, we started doing a equipment condition monitoring center where actually we built this kind of a, you know, we start, we have started, you know, it, it, and it, it, that this, this will scale across site because this is kind of a, a command center development, which we are doing uh, for them. So all the site information will write now slowly come into this command center. So starting with this one site, so uh, and all these key health parameters from engine to paint lift, ASRS, you know, automatic storage retrieval system, which is there to, you know, AGVs, DCS tools, etc. All those are getting monitored. All the equipment condition monitoring is there. We'll move next step to, you know, as a part of the roadmap, the next step will get into the predictive part of it. But the real view is here to give that complete condition monitoring uh, program and then scale it up to all the sites there. Third is one of the factories where, you know, we saw there's a huge amount of, you know, uh, disturbance in terms of the uh, material movement part of it. And there is shortage 
material shortage at various locations within the factory. So, you know, so that's where we went ahead and said that, OK, this is where we go ahead and we look at a system where, you know, all this material uh, and build a system uh, from a material, uh, you know, communication perspective that and do a better logistical planning within the factory there. Then that's where, you know, see a kind of a ROI around a 400 plus percent ROI, which they are going to achieve in three years is something is defined. Same way, another on the quality part of it, you know, is something where we see that, you know, uh, the, uh, you know, the quality station there uh, in this side, basically the operators and the quality, quality gate uh, coordinators, you know, so the audio visual quality, uh, you know, alerts, you know, uh, is something, you know, uh, what provided there to have a better first pass yield. So, so that is some of the programs we have started around. And I just wanted to, you know, touch base on this and uh, show you in terms of, you know, what kind of industrial scalable programs we are looking at. So I'll stop now. We have uh, eight or nine minutes, I think, and we can uh, go through some questions if you have some questions and take this forward. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Ankit, for sharing a lot of I mean, interesting insights in this very hot. So, uh, let, and as you said, I mean, let's open up for questions. So anyone who would like I mean, to go first and having any questions, Ankit. Otherwise, I have one first question, and I used to ask that actually. I think it's re really interesting also to see. In short, actually, I, I, you, you touched base a little bit on that earlier in your presentation also, but I mean, how do you think, I mean, a company should get started with any kind of, I mean, industry for or, or transformation product? Yeah, so as a as a starting point, you know, that's where we, uh, you know, suggest basically a manufacturing company is to look at you know their strategy in terms of what business goals they want to meet through right because that is very important because otherwise you know and and, and to look at it as a as a whole perspective as an organization and not in silos as a you know one specific department or one specific unit and that is where you know the real you know uh, work will come across and real scalable strategy will come across and then then you go ahead and build that strategy you look at all the you know as i was mentioning earlier you look at all the people process you know perspective the technology perspective into the game define you know how you're going to span out and it's not a one year journey or a you know, one program journey because you're connecting, you're building a digital thread, you're looking at, you know, solving problems uh, uh, where there is a little automation can help you or little optimization can help you. There's a lot beyond, you know, uh, from a data perspective also you can look at from a AI perspective, you can look at and drive, you know, certain insights and create value in the system. So you really need to look at insight, you know, as an organization, what business goals you have, what kind of use cases you will will help you, and then define the strategy around it in terms of, you know, the uh, the people, the technology, and, you know, the different levers, how it comes across. Thanks. Thanks. Anyone else would like to go next, having any questions? Otherwise, I had a follow up question actually, and uh, that is related. I mean, to to what what kind of I mean support? I mean, when it comes to I mean uh, starting a product like you just mentioned, I mean, is it so that I mean companies are normally I mean utilizing I mean uh, external support, or do they think that, that they could actually do it themselves? Or I mean, what's the normal I mean perception? I think companies uh, understand that they will need support from uh, various stakeholders. Mm. inside and outside as well so definitely there is certain you know from a strategy point of view we have seen companies trying to build it internally but then they come across you know company like us and tell us you know this is a help we need in terms of defining because you get a technical you know advice from we get a technical plus a business advice and looking at different other companies and benchmarking you know kind of a view what you know the ecosystem is building up is you know come across but then from an implementation view, which is the second part of it, right? Really implementing the solution, making it more scalable. They definitely need different, you know, providers. You need, uh, you know, people who can provide uh, the uh, uh, the platforms, the tools to be used in this case, right? 
and then you need uh, you know the service integrators where you know they come across and they do the integration across they understand your landscape how it is currently there how the application modernization needs to happen what you should keep you know as i was mentioning earlier also then the third element is the network infrastructure side of it so you need providers from that perspective that you know is there element of 5g you need to bring in for example is there element of sd wan you need to look from a connect connectivity perspective are these use cases for example a lot of these use cases conversations we are doing with many of the manufacturers they're saying you know we need agps we need augmented reality you know solutions we need different solutions and these are mobile solutions we need wireless connectivity there whether it is wi-fi 6 or 5g what kind of communication it should be on so those are certain elements also we are discussing and that's where also a lot of you know the network telco companies also play a role so it's a huge ecosystem so definitely i think manufacturing industry will need you know all these set of players to come together and work in that direction thank you ankit yeah so anyone in the audience would like to raise your hand and having any questions Otherwise, I had another question actually. So, uh, based on I mean your uh, experience and working in in MA, I mean, how mature would you say that the industry is actually currently, and and who are the industries I mean leading and why? Okay, yeah. So if I uh, take a look at uh, Europe, right, and I'll you know uh, focus on Europe and then probably compare with US and the APAC side of it, how the entire story is going across. OK, so if you see from automation and robotics perspective, you know, so if you look at that in uh, uh, Europe, uh, there's a high level of uh, automation which is already done. The, the, the number of robots per uh, thousand people in uh, you know Europe will be around 32, 42. Uh, depending on each country so you know germany sweden they are more advanced denmark is quite advanced in terms of having a robotization and automation at the factory side of it so that means that there's a good amount of efficiency uh, requirement they have already solved from that while if you compare to manufacturers in america they are a little laggard behind europe and then if you look at apac there are certain countries like japan and china which are at par Right. And that's where the competition is coming across, you know, in terms of manufacturing. Right. So now the next step, what we are seeing in Europe, the companies are taking is moving towards more and more AI specific solution. It's more and more because that's where the uh, the delta, the efficiency is going to improve with. Right. So if you want to bring in certain AI ML, so there's where we see a lot of investment in the European companies. They're investing into the AI ML kind of a solutions which will bring deliver further efficiencies, whether it is from a throughput cost or a quality perspective and make the European manufacturers more and more, you know, competitive uh, across these three regions. Thanks for the good answer. Uh, I had another question also, I mean, regarding, I mean, what would you say that uh, the biggest challenges might be, I mean, when it comes to the mindset of, I mean, and the culture of people and organizations to get started with any kind of, I mean, industry, so, I mean, products. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So there is a good amount of, a, you know, a change which is required in terms of, you know, how we used to, you know, deliver certain things right and you know how it is going to be when we're going towards the industry 4.0 that's one of the challenges and that's where you know when i spoke about the technology the process i also spoke about the people perspective and then how do you bring that change in the organization and that has to flow from all directions so and that's where how we set it up you know when we do this kind of engagements with our customers as well we look at from a people perspective, we define the strategy in terms of how you know acceptable it will be. So the worker at the you know uh, shop floor, they has to they have to uh, understand the kind of a value it has to drive, right? And that's where the adoption of some of these solution will uh, come across. So those are you know some elements we'll need to definitely you know work across and look at those you know from an overall perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Any last questions, anyone or? 
Right. I think, I mean, you're, you're spot on and crystal clear everything here. So time is unfortunately running out. So many thanks everyone for joining. And of course, a special thanks to you, Ankit. But please also stay tuned for the next Nordic Talks already next week on SaaS strategy for heavy PLM by PTC. So with that, and I hope you all have a really nice weekend. So bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Toby, for organizing this. Thank you. Thanks.